Alrighty, today we're gonna be making this handrail right here. I went out and measured everything, got an idea what they want. It's gonna have these little neat things on top of the posts, a nice decorative uh, rail cap, half inch balusters. So it's gonna be three of these. They're all basically the same. So uh, first step is I've got to do some math. You all kids that think math ain't important, it's important. See all these numbers? I gotta type them into the thing and do stuff and figure out rise and run and, and angles and hypotenuses. So uh, let's hit the table, get the pencil out. First thing we're gonna do, find the construction calculator on my phone. I got a couple different ones. They're both free, so they're not the best. Um, but they're free and they'll do the job. Basically what I need to do first, find my rise and run. All of these are basically the same, but not quite. Uh, they're all really close. So I'm gonna figure out if I can get away with um, just making one, all the rails the same, and then when they get installed, just fudging them a little bit. All of this math shows that I need to make two different blueprints. One blueprint for the handrail that's by itself on a staircase, and a blueprint for two different handrails that go on another staircase. Alright, so what I'm going to do here... I've never really built a handrail like this. He wants the this post on the front of this steer, this post on the back of this steer, which really messes with my brain because you either start here and end here or start here and here. You do it always on either the front of both steps or the back of both steps, not at the front of one the back of the other. So it really messes with my brain. So I'm just going to draw a life-size picture of it on the board here. Here I decided this is way harder than I thought it was going to be. I thought I could just draw it all on the whiteboard in life size uh, proportions and take measurements from there, but I was wrong. I threw in the towel and downloaded the AutoCAD app on my phone. I got the 30 day free trial and I sure hoped it would take less than 30 days to draw this drawing. It took me about 3 hours to learn how to use the software and draw the first handrail and about 30 minutes to draw the second handrail. I had every intention of recording the second handrail that only took a half hour where I was comfortable with the software, but I forgot to record that one so I'm going to let you watch me struggle for a while. Bada boom, bada bing, it's a finished blueprint. After I had the blueprints drawn, I made a cut list from the blueprint and I got to cutting. Okie dokie, I've got half the saw cutting done. I've got the uprights and the top and bottom rail. Um, then I did a little prep work here. Pulled the table out so I can get all the way around it. And then I drew a picture to scale. I know you probably can't see it very well, but there is a scale picture 
of the handrail right there. That way I've got somewhere to lay my pieces and make sure it's kind of good. Um, so far everything seems like it's coming out right. So that makes me happy. Anyway, next up, I'm gonna tack this stuff up and then I'm gonna go back to cutting the baluster pieces. And yeah, then I'll get her done. Rule number one in a metal shop, if you make a burr, you deburr the part. So look at that, right there, that nice sharp burr. That is sharper than any razor you'll ever touch. I have cut myself more on those burrs than I've cut myself on anything else. They're super sharp. I know they're there, but somehow I still manage to cut myself. So today I'm actually wearing gloves. Burr, cold. Remember the word fudge? That's what I'm doing here. I'm using half clamps to clamp the balusters in place at the right dimension. That way, if I cut my top and bottom rails a little short, I can just leave a little gap on each end and nobody knows they're there. Now you can see I'm using shims to hold the top and bottom rails in the right place on the balusters. Here I am using shims to hold up the balusters and I'm tacking them in place. And yes, those are actually called balusters. The other things I was calling balusters are actually newel posts. Partially tacked up. See? Now, now I'm gonna weld them out, and when they're cooling, I'm gonna be making base plates. And then I'll weld the base plates on. Then the last thing I'm gonna do is put the top cap on and the finial things on. So I'm gonna get to welding. paying attention you notice that I was bouncing around with my welds and that is to keep it from turning into a banana or a rainbow um, it just makes it so you're not heating up one area and physics and things will mess it up so I bounced around and I think it's okay okie dokie off camera I made faith plates one two three four holes for mounting one hole in the middle which is for water to drain out of. The top isn't gonna to be exactly sealed because of the way those finials sit. Uh, so it's always smart to leave somewhere for the water to drain because that tube can fill up with water and when it freezes, it explodes, turns round, cracks. So, a little proactive-ness, uh, got a hole there. So any water that gets in there, condensation, whatever, gonna mostly be condensation if anything, but it can drain out and that way, we don't have exploding handrails. All right, get them on there. All righty, I've got this part all packed up. That's the easy, well, not the easy. Everything that's not fancy. So now, this fancy rail cap needs to go on. I got this one cut to size, and then the fancy finials need to go on top. 
The rail cap is, I believe, just uh, steel of some kind. The finials, I know, are some kind of iron. So I think I can make weld the rail cap on, but I will have to stick weld with fancy rod those finials on. So I'm gonna get to it. Okie dokie, got the rail cap on. I'll just let you see it. Okay, rail cap's on and welded. Got the stitches up there underneath. Just enough to hold it on, nothing crazy. And now, we have gotta put these finial things on here. They're cast iron of some kind. See, that's kind of rough there. This one was really rough. I hit it on the belt sander because it didn't even look like the rest. I think there might be one more like this, so if that's the case, I'm gonna fix that one up too and put it on the rail that's by itself. And then all the rest will go on the rails that you will see next to each other. So that way, just uh, by looking at it, you won't really notice it. Um, got stick welder set up. I do not know where I'm supposed to run this rod, so I'm guessing. Um, yeah, this is a rod I, I maybe used like one stick of this in my life. It's a uh, uh, good question. It's nickel something or other. I don't know. Anyway, some kind of nickel rod. This is just a bag that it came in. It's not actually the label. So I'm just gonna, gonna give her a try. Uh, I'm just gonna stitch it on there very lightly just so they stick on there. Alrighty, let's get to it. This nickel rod actually welds on electrode negative or straight polarity, not reverse polarity or electrode positive like almost every other stick rod runs on. I found that out the hard way. It wouldn't run on electrode positive, so I put it on negative and it ran super sweet. I got all the welding done. Now I just gotta get them all cleaned. Check them out. Check them out. Alrighty, I'm gonna get to cleaning them. Anyway, I think they're really neat. Anyway, it's been real. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you learned something. See you next time.